Welcome, welcome to another episode of Conscious Reconstruction. We are here with out the normal Asha in the building, but we do have the one and only Trina here representing. She's having some mic tech. I don't know what's happening. Where I was trying to move it closer. Hold on. Yeah. Um. Will you help her with that? She seems like she don't know what's going. Is what happened? This is going down. This oh. Try to tighten it. I think you gotta turn it the other way. No, it's this is fine. All right. Sorry, y'all. Okay. It's been a it's gonna be an interesting next week. Yeah. We'll yeah. see what happens on the twentieth. Oh, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> uh, they already got like they've already called in all the National Guard members, and they it, ju- if something happens, they, it, it might be a slaughter. They just see somebody with a fake press pass. But like 200 bullets, 500 bullets, something 500 like that. bullets and a loaded Glock. But I don't understand why you're taking 500 bullets when you have a Glock. <laughs> you ain't going to get that far. Because the funny thing is, like, yeah, I got 500 bullets. Are you about to actually physically reload? Yeah, like, it wasn't, <laughs> he didn't have, like, loaded clips. No. There's 500 bullets. These people hmm. have, like, the Secret Service just lays around and does nothing. Like, they just... That don't make sense. What were you <laughs> like, oh, and, and like? The person is like, "What was your plan?" Like, like you were gonna shoot like one person. I have lots of bullets, and my next step is to start buying extra magazines because the most exactly. inconvenient thing is to run out of bullets to and then have loading. to drop the mag and then grab loose bullets and try and reload your. What are you talking about? Ah, he was gonna. The say. only time you do that is with a shot. I don't understand. Who's gonna reload? Like it, it's not tough to put them little things in there. Oh my god, that doesn't make no. I am so confused. Why did you come with the bullets? You just so you brought a whole bunch of extra stuff that had no. Did you have friends? Were they gonna load their guns when they got there? Did they come with empty weapons and you brought all the ammunition for everybody? So that I means they're incredibly upset right now. You got all the bullets and you got caught. That's very disappointing. They sit up here. We don't have any bullets, and they won't sell us any in all of Washington D.C. because they don't trust any of us. They already got them anyway. Hell, uh, those people get sponsored by folks that we don't even know about. Like, uh, it's a real interesting thing because this is something that they everyone that everyone on that side of the political leaning side said it wouldn't happen if if Trump were to lose. I never seen so many people come out for one person. Like like he just gonna bail these people out. I mean, <laughs> like he cares out. about these people. <laughs> That's the thing. The reason why he go you know, he gonna use that travel allowance while he got it. Before he leaves, it's gonna be like, Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm not going to the inauguration. Where you at? I'm on this plane to Russia for real though. <laughs> That is very, I'm, you know, I used to live in a capital city. And so thinking about it from that perspective, this probably would be a very like troubling time. Cause, um, well, I mean, no, there's a lot of conservatives in California. Yes, yes, inland California. That's yeah. that's the shocking part. It's yeah, not and a so conservative I'm, I'm from Sacramento, so. Uh, uh, very honest. That's him in the capital that, of California. Really? <laughs> I mean, yeah, most places that are the capital are. Innocuous. Innocuous in the center of the country, um, the state. Mm. They try and put them in the middle, um, away from what is like the other valuable military target. AKA like your ports and shit like that. That's why there's no like port capitals. I mean, there's nothing north of Sacramento, really. Yeah, there's uh, Tahoe. There's Redding. There's uh, there's a, a little quite a bit. There's the whole redwood forest. <laughs> I mean, I under, I'm not saying there's nothing up there, but in terms of like the California that the average person cares about, it's like it's oh no, Sacramento. yeah, yeah. Is like, it? there's some stuff up there, but there's, like, no major tech capitals or anything like that. Yeah, no, our tech capital is, like... San Francisco. San Francisco. So, it's, like, adjacent to uh, Sacramento. Maybe so, two hours away, something like that. Not too far. Oh, that's the entire state of Ohio, dude. You're correct. But for me, where 
uh, I can drive 12 hours and just be in LA. I or and I spent a decent bit of time in Texas where I drove four hours to get to different cities. Two hours is like not bad. Not not bad at all. Real that's two sixty minute chunks. Oh, you can I mean, listen to a whole podcast that is going to span that and be done. Well, my problem with California is it's not the fact that I'm twelve hours of driving. It's very possible that I'm four hours of traffic and eight hours of driving. Which is more so upsetting because it's the sitting still part that kills me. Now. That's because you guys don't do it right. Leave at night if you're going to travel. Oh, I mean, Midwesterners drive more than any, drive more than anyone else. Then anywhere. leave at night. That's that's what I found. Leaving at night is probably the best way to travel, especially if you're going long distances around the time when you're going to get tired. The sun's coming up, and then it's kind of hard to go to sleep when the sun's in your eyes. Oh, uh, the only other thing that's pretty interesting about California in terms of infrastructure, travel infrastructure is really cheap to fly with in California. Oh yeah, you yeah. Can get around. Yeah, you can get around California once you're in. Yeah, real easy. It's not a problem at all. Like it's eighty bucks or a hundred bucks to get a plane ticket from like. San Luis Batisto down to like San Francisco over to San Francisco or up to Sacramento. It's better than driving. Oh yeah, no, you're gonna it's not bad at all to like inside of the state to travel. It's because we have airports everywhere. Right. So it's not like they're not doing this where like I know I live when I lived in Texas, I lived in Abilene. I would literally have to take a flight from Abilene, Texas to Dallas to fly out of the actual state of Texas. Yeah, because Dallas-Fort Worth is the only real... Yeah. Area. And that was close enough. It was either that, um, you could go to... You could technically probably fly over to Atlanta, but... Yeah, there's... They're just... They're still going to just fly me to another... They're only, they only fly to Dallas. Then you could either fly... Because Dallas is the closest to them. Uh, San Antonio was like four and a half, five hours away. Houston is six. So yeah, everywhere is, and Dallas was four hours, probably right on the nose. Yeah. So that's the only place that they're flying you to because it takes maybe an hour flight. Yep. So have, that's the only place they'll let you. I have a question. Would you advise people to move to California? Depends on what you're looking for. Because I know, like reading up and you know paying attention, a lot of people are leaving. A lot California. of conservatives are leaving. I wouldn't even say that. There's some left lady people. There's a too. there's a lot because of the cost, like especially during COVID. A lot of people are upset that California shut down, but if the rest of the country had have responded adequately, like California did, then we probably wouldn't be in this situation. Because the other place that shut down like this is New York, the other place that people are talking about leaving. Yeah. But they both shut down adequately because they were hit the hardest because they're port cities. It the travel hubs. It, yeah, it, it, it's true. It, yeah. yeah, people, tourists are going to come here if we're open. Yeah. So we can't be open. It's not like yeah. if we're open for our people, other people are going to come and travel here. Yeah. It's. It's a story that works. It's yeah. Not. Like Ohio being open isn't going to be like, oh shit, Ohio's open. Let's go to Ohio. Like, <laughs> who the fuck? Even though there were no. people who definitely were like that while we were open, it's just like, oh, why are you well, here? There because were, you're the only place that that's actually open. Right. There, there were people that did go to like smaller cities. True, but the influx is definitely yeah, not, not going to be the same. Volume, but but the crazy part it's is just a demonstration of how stupid people are right. when it comes to dealing with. Stuff. Yeah. Right. So if they're gonna, if so, if we get a little bit of people here in fucking Ohio. I could imagine if yeah, California yeah. opened up, they're like, oh, it's open? Shit. We're, they tried to have the Grammys. Well, here's the thing. A lot of people now, when they go to these smaller places, a lot of people are complaining that live in those places. Not necessarily here, but, you know, like the South Dakotas, all that, you know. And now they're discovering, oh, my God, I can live here for half the price. Why would I want to go back to California? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, like I said, it depends on what you're going there for. It a lot of things you don't need to like Joe Rogan left but Joe Rogan does a podcast Joe yeah. Rogan doesn't need to be there anymore. he can live wherever he, he wants yeah and yeah. when he did need to be there it was more based off of him being um, in Fear Factor and on television and things mm -hmm. like that not when he started to transition to doing a podcast and going to referee UFC or commentate UFC fights well, he could live don't happen in LA exactly so he could he could have like I said so he could have he could have been moved 
so it was not beneficial because his what he's doing has no like real growth benefit there. Yeah. Though probably so the it, only nice thing is like it's real easy for guests to get to the studio if you're in LA already. Yeah. Other than that, I think that um who's a guy? I don't know if y'all are familiar, um, but Cardiac, he's a producer. He was based on the East Coast. He produces for all of the really big time R and B people, her, SZA, um, who are in a grande. I'm just pretty much all of the big but he started to make real connections and things like that once he moved to California. Uh-huh. Because the industry for like R and B and things like that was much more prevalent. Like New York is more hip hop. Yeah. And so he had a much much greater success in California. So I think that it depends on what you're going there for. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of people leaving, but I would say a lot of them are like, oh, we're here, but the politics that you guys are closing is supposed to be so liberal. Mm, you guys don't want it to be liberal, realistically. What you want it to be is conservative with a liberal facade. Yeah. Because you guys are mad that they closed everything. That's fine. What's not liberal about closing? That's why everybody's upset. Like I said, like- they thought that they feel like it's an overreaction. Uh, not... And then, like, all the scientists say that we shouldn't have closed everything and we could have... What scientist says that? I, I mean, feel like they're just le- reading articles that they, and then they're agreeing with them without actually... Overseas, they're way more stricter than we have been. And, yeah. like, it's... Overseas it, dealt with it a lot swifter because they were strict for a short amount of time. But they're still and then, being and then strict. Thing, yeah, but things then were able to occur and tell. Where here, we were half ass one foot in one foot out and we allowed different states to individually choose how they were going to handle this situation instead of being like all right as a country this is how we're going to deal with this and these are the steps we're going to take to move past it mm-hmm. but being an individualist has its issues and that's primarily one of them yeah we want everybody to work on an individual basis but it doesn't work like that Oh, but we also, a lot of people want a weak central government, and that's what a weak central government gets you. You can't get people to do stuff. I mean, shit, but we have one because, look, they stormed the Capitol. Oh, no, I'm not saying we have a strong. Honestly, our central government is probably on the lighter side in terms, like, people think that For now. We, I mean, people just cut. I mean, if you look around and compare it to other people, like, regardless, even if we correct overboard towards England... Or so stuff like that, we would still be one of the more conservative governments. Like there, we just have less government and less infrastructure and less a lot of things. Whereas you look at somebody, someplace like Japan or something like that, there's heavy taxing, there's heavy a lot of things, but they also don't. They also have way better public infrastructure and a whole lot of other stuff. So it's a give and take type thing. Yeah, I want them damn bullet trains. I would love bullet trains, but. How do y'all feel about Trump being banned from everything? I was just about to get into that. How do you feel about it? I think it's a double-edged sword. I think, okay, yes, Trump getting banned. I get it. The Capitol got stormed. Did he tell people to storm the Capitol? No. But did he incite it? Yes. But where does the censorship stop? Uh, like everybody talks about oh Trump got banned and blah 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 and I'm like okay so where does it end cause we're saying yeah Trump got banned but where where does the censorship end I don't think that it needs to end or there has to be an end because Trump can hold a press conference right now Mm -hmm. and people are still gonna hear what he has to say but yeah. what people are mad about is Trump being banned off of private companies. Just because you guys view that as the new communication, that is, they are still private companies. They are private companies. So they don't owe you free speech. No. That's not what they offer. No, but like I said, where does it end? It, it's it, going to stop. It's it gonna, doesn't end is what I'm saying. It, it doesn't it, end. So where's the free speech? There's Whoa. no free speech on private company stuff. Okay, private company off a private company. Where does it end? Like, 
He okay. like I said, he can he hold a press conference and say what he wants to say. Like and ma- national media. Can he really like, say what he wants to say? Yeah, yeah. He does anyway. He does. He has been. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying. I don't know. I think they're gonna use this capital situation to even be more, even more strict. I mean, like I. Go ahead. Oh, the thing about Twitter, bit Twitter, YouTube, all these Twitch, all these people—they're private organizations that can set their criteria based on whatever they want to. So honestly, from the beginning, they could have been as strict or as liberal as they wanted to be. No one was mad when they banned Boosie. Boosie has been asking Mark Zuckerberger. I know his name is Mark Zuckerberg, but he <laughs> but Boosie called him Mark Zuckerberger. He said, "Somebody give me the not the number to Mark Zuckerberger. Bosses got to talk to bosses." He's like, "I need my Instagram back." So yeah, his Instagram has been suspended because he kept having women show like Post nudity. Yeah, being naked on there. So I'm like, okay, no one championed that and was upset when he lost it, but because Trump literally caused the Capitol. But where did Trump say storm the Capitol? That's not what I'm saying. Uh Uh-huh. He said, um, don't be afraid to, don't be a pussy, and fighting for your rights is um, one of your American rights. So he's saying all of the things that lead you to that. So yeah, he can say, you you can say that no, he didn't directly say do this. That's cool, mm-hmm. but what you did say led to it, and then what you didn't say, because when everybody said, hey, you need to make a statement, you didn't do that. You played golf. So you decided not to use the platform that you have to make a statement. So cool. Since you don't want to use it, then now you're not on it, and that should also be fine. It's, it's not yours. It's, it's the same so you as don't saying think- it. So you don't think this is going to be used even further? You it don't can think, be. I think that uh, do you all think, the websites can be like, you know what? Unless you're saying things that we agree with, we're not going to have you on here. Right. Do you do you realize that's what North Korea does? Do you realize that's what China but does? That's not what but, the government is doing. Y'all are conflating but, the two things. No, I don't think so. Uh, how? The government is not telling the YouTube government to isn't, take down stuff. The government isn't telling the YouTube to take down anything. And I'm not, I never said they were. But yet. if the government, the government still allows you freedom of speech. For now. Well, no, that's guaranteed. It's not the First Amendment. The yeah, government the, the government hasn't done any. So I don't know why we're looking at what companies are doing and then being like, oh, this is the government. That They're not the same. I just find it funny because I follow smaller plat- platforms, right? They'll talk about the same thing everybody else is talking for, and they'll get banned or they'll get censored. These large entities, like these large news networks, can retwist and say anything that they want. Nobody bans them. Nobody says anything. I'm just like, so what are y'all really trying to do? Like, it's just my observation. Like, but we I'm have a smaller platform. I'm not saying that's incorrect. Uh-huh. But I'm saying that if you're going to operate on somebody else's platform, you're beholden to their whims. Mm-hmm. That's not the country's issue. That's so you, you believe if not we, owning your own platform so issue. We, so if we created our own platform, right? Yeah. We automatically make the rules, right? So yes. Trump can go on there and be like, well, yeah, blah, 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 blah. see, <laughs> it really just depends upon how you go about it. Yeah, because, all right, so Excuse there's Parler. All right, is that what it's called? Yes, Parler. Yeah, so Parler is like a right wing Facebook. Yeah. And so Trump can go in there and say whatever he wants. Yeah. But what happened to Parler is all the companies that host Parler's app decided that we don't want to host it anymore. So you, they aren't on the App Store anymore, they're not in the Microsoft Store. They're so not kicked them off of their servers. Yeah, it's still their stuff. So and this need. is specifically about Trump. This is not me saying he should shouldn't get banned or whatever. But I'm. But, ju- I'm but what just, I'm saying is, unless you own your own things, uh-huh. you're subject to somebody else's whims, and that's. This is what I'm talking about. How a con- that's how corporations work. This is what I'm talking about. What. You just said if we created our own platforms, right? Before you even said that. Yeah, if you create your own platform right? but you don't own where it sits, you're still subject to somebody else's whims. You have to create really? your own house. You create you your own. the internet is just not my own house. It is, but uh-huh. Facebook isn't the internet. No, I'm not saying Facebook. I said if we created our own platform, 
right? We, then we would be fine. Do you, do you think? Oh, okay. Unless well, we put our platform on Amazon S- marketplace. But, but so let's say we bought service from Amazon. You really think? Then we'll we're not be, fine. You really think we'll be fine? Yes. Oh, I mean, if we were to buy our own blade servers, build our stuff up, build our own infrastructure and host uh-huh. for ourselves, we could do it. I could do that. You but don't think you, that we would get subpoenaed? You don't think we would have like? Hey, you I mean, you can get subpoenaed and a whole bunch of other stuff, but there's a. But the thing is, with that, there's a whole litany of people that you can tap into that that'll be like, oh, we're all gung ho for it. I mean, the NRA literally just went under because they were trying to do. They did so many political donations. So, to try and preserve these types of things. You can get zealots and dumb people to actually donate to the cause. But even if you, so you could do that, but you can't host it anywhere else, so you're going to lose a, a chunk of the audience. And so that's what they're mad about. They're mad that I can't go to Facebook where everybody else is at. That's fine. But what I'm saying is, is where does the line be drawn? You can create your own things. You can create your own things, but what I'm saying is, is the line is not being drawn. We can create our own sh- own stuff. Excuse me, I don't want to cuss too much. You can create our own stuff. But when we create our own stuff, then you're like, oh, this robot, this robot, oh, you're subpoena. You got to come to court. Oh, you got to do this. You got to. So I it's mean, really but, not free. But everybody gets the shit. Mark Zuckerberg gets That's subpoenaed. That's what I'm saying. Where's the line? You're not getting it. I the, don't think that. So you don't think that they're not going to use this incident to be like, Oh, I know this is your own platform and stuff, but we don't like what you're saying, so take it off. I mean, I think those are two different issues. Also, historically, uh, is it? it's not like yeah, because one is companies doing one thing, and the other is the country, the and the government. I think is pretty okay with what happened. Yeah, I know they are. It so was all in the think, plan. So I don't think that they're going to do anything. Now the companies had a reaction towards Trump removed him and I think that they all did that in solidarity in a coalition so it couldn't be like one person singling it yeah, out because I mean the weird thing about the tech yeah. part front is me. all these dudes are friends like Zuckerberg knows the, the person who runs Twitter who knows the person who owns Pinterest yeah all these people are friends yeah. so when the Twitter dude came in it's like I really gotta take this thing I gotta take this dude off my thing and I don't know what y'all gonna do but I suggest you guys do the same thing. And it's just like, well, if, one of, if all of us do it, what they going to do? Go somewhere else? There's nowhere else. I mean, for now. But like I was saying, where's the line drawn? I'm I mean, not talking about on their platforms. For, for us. If we create a platform, do you not believe that the government will not step in? No. Like, no. They haven't. They haven't. Uh, they, they didn't step in on Parler. Okay. Parler still does what it wants to do. I'm saying they're going to use this incident to start stepping in. I don't that's, think so. That's, I, I personally think so. That's just my opinion. I mean, that And was, I can see it coming. A lot but, of people, all right, Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, my thing about that is just like, I can't see it coming because they haven't done it in any other situation. So it's just like, a different situation, though. But it's one of those things where, like... Like, say they're going to do something that runs contradictory to everything that they've done up to this point. It's like, we've established and we have, like, a judiciary system and things like that that are fairly capable of vetting these things out. Not saying that our judiciary system is perfect by any means, but Mm -hmm. in general, in situations like this, like, when the government comes in, when the government comes in and says they want to do something, they look at it and say, yeah, no, that's not legal. That's not constitutional. But, but, But here's the thing, like, Internet is fairly new. Before the internet, where do we get our news source? From one spot, from one place, right? So TV. You had different TV networks, right? Well, I mean, different. TV. But you had different news channels. But there was like how many? I mean, you had TV. You had the papers. You had. You had, had the Times. papers, but we're we're ingesting information at such a faster rate that the media cannot no longer control the mer- narrative, right? So that is a problem. I, mean, I I think the government thinks that's a freaking problem, and a lot of people aren't seeing that. Like, just for me, just saying that, it kind of makes me think, like, did they really plan this shit out? Oh, well, I think government officials were shown to have helped work in the uh, Capitol. Right. But I also don't... So, like I said, I think they're two different issues. I think that the government working 
with them just shows another level of <clears throat> white privilege, um, how white supremacy works, and how there is a vast difference in the way skin tones are treated, mm -hmm. where one group was let in and allowed to climb the walls, break windows, and storm a capital, and the other group that was across the street holding a rally was was met with um, tear gas, rubber, tear gas bullets. rubber bullets. Of course, of course, we know that. We, I mean, that's not a. But what I'm saying is. I don't think that white America had such a big issue with this. I never said they had a... a but so have... if they didn't have a big issue, I don't think they're going to change anything. Now, I think that the... I'm not... Websites or the social media apps that decided to take this uh, move against him have always had this power and people have just kind of ignored it to an extent. And now that they've done something so sweeping, everybody's like, oh, shit, they could do that? Well, yeah. And it's they've also, owned it. It's like... I mean... It's like when Walmart says, no shoes, no socks, no service. It's like, if you aren't here in the appropriate manner that we want you to be, then you can't come here and uh, utilize our stuff. Same thing, it's just on the internet. I know. We just got to build our own thing on the internet, and that's what people don't want to do. People want to have it handed to them and walk into somebody else's thing. I mean, uh, most people just don't have the skill set to be able to build something on the internet to be able to do stuff like that. Oh, what I'm saying is, even so, I think there's going to be an issue. Even even if we did, it's um, always I a guess I'd block. have to see that there. I'd have to see that be the case. Right. I mean, for me, it runs kind of <clears> through <throat> every single trend and it also kind of has to hold up in court because it's very, very possible. Like, we have organizations that are like, oh God, why can't I remember the name of the organization that specifically shoots for individual rights? Not the NRP, something like, something weird. But, it, I'm pretty sure it would just get challenged in constitutional court if it just gets struck down, it'll get struck down. Like, because unlike a lot of those dictatorial places, they don't they control all branches of the government to the point where there is nothing outside of their purview. But I do think that, like right now, <clears throat> Instagram is banning um, sex workers. Yeah. And targeting them. I think it's fucked up, but I also think that it's their right. I mean, it's pretty much the MO of every single major site that gets built up. And like, I follow people on Twitter where I think it's one of the very few people where places where nudity is not actually against the terms of service. Yeah, you can do, you can do pretty much whatever you want on Twitter. Yeah, I, I know that for a fact. I know that for that um, some sex workers, they'll put like their link tr tree or something like that. It's called link tree. Yeah. And they'll put their OnlyFans in there along with their prices and all that other BS. But, I mean, I saw that coming because I already knew it was happening. I mean, that's just kind of how it's the MO of a lot of sites. Like, Patreon used to allow sex workers. Now they don't. So people made OnlyFans. And it's just like you use these people to build up your website. And then you kick out the undesirables because it's built up now. Is it messed up? Yes. Is it? I think that there's a weird stigma against sex workers that yeah. should be removed. I mean, it's illegal in most places. The legality, pretty much. My thing is in in this. <clears throat> but why is my it issue with this is this level of sex work is independent porn. So why are we upset at an independent porn exactly. porn industry when we would? promote an independent film industry. Yeah. I mean, it's not that they're particularly upset about it. It's that they used it to build up their platform and now they no longer want and to here, And here's the thing. And here's the thing. You still got people like Pornhub and these verified porn stars still shaking their ass on Instagram and don't get banned. It's just that they see independent People making money, and I bet you Pornhub and like bigger sites have their hands in the pockets. Like, oh, we can't let them make money, so let's ban them all. 
They're at the print mean, of contract. I, what I'll also say is OnlyFans is probably established enough at this point to the point where it's just kind of like, I don't know what going through our OnlyFans is actually like, so I would actually have to poke, poke around on the application. And if I can put my SoundCloud page on there, then I should be able to post my OnlyFans page on there. I mean, that kind of just falls in line of we can kind of set the line where we want to set the line. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's stupid. Yeah, this that like you have to have a line now. There's a line now. Well, yeah, because now we have the ba- user base that we want to have, so we don't need you anymore. That is that is the way that quit like uh, Instagram is doing that. Just like um that one platform who fell off because they banned nudity. I forgot. Uh, what oh, was Tumblr. Up. Yep. Well, off. Tumblr had a whole other problem with child porn. Well, yeah, I get that. And so there he's are, got rid of it all. There are, there are ways around it. No, they want an excuse. Like, there's ways around that. Like, Pornhub can vet they people, whoever posts. They just choose not to. It's like, well, let's just get rid of them all. It's like, so now you don't support... You, you, get, your, you get all your people from independent websites like Strip, Strip Chat and all that shit. People get verified that way. They find people, they message them, everything else, but now it's a freaking issue. It's kind of like, okay, well. Well, they don't want to. It's not really. I don't think it's an issue. Uh, I don't think they want to put it, the infrastructure in place to vet people because that costs money. And people don't like. I mean, it's kind of the issue when you become very dollar, bottom line dependent. And it's like, it's about making the most amount of money for the least amount of work. And that's pretty much how most people operate. So when you actually tell them, well, we're going to have to change the way. Uh, so it costs doing. that much money to vet people, like to actually well, let them pe- show their ID. Do you that- need people to actually look at their IDs? You need people to verify their IDs. You need people to communicate with these people. And so that requires hiring people and manpower costs money. And I don't know where Pornhub is based out of. But like I mean, you could just some get some shit. random Indian people to do it. That's a possibility. Uh, but it just like outsources to India. They don't even of, vet the people that come in and watch their porn. The, uh, that I do believe they have like some accepted terms and services or something that probably at the center porn hub that tells you, like if you enter this site and you're on, like don't come in, here. like legally that's all they're obligated to do. Yeah, don't come in here if you're under eighteen. I guess. M- my only thing would be if the thing says don't come up here if you're not under 18, then shouldn't the other thing just be don't upload if all party members aren't willing and over the consensual 18 age or over 18? 18, 18 I mean, most people are. You're not supposed to be. <clears throat> I don't think you're supposed to be on Facebook if you're under a certain age. Yeah, but so if they say that you're got to be 18 or older, then why doesn't that absolve them of uploading responsibilities if that's fine for people to just go in there and watch? Oh, I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm not saying it's a technic- It's not illegal for them to be on there. There's nothing particularly wrong. It's that Instagram no longer wants them there. They made a cognizant business decision that... They made a cognizant business decision that having these girls showing their boobs... On this site now, it's more of a detriment than it is an asset. So we are going to... They're not that. showing it on Instagram, though. Or these people basically not showing their boobs on our platform is more problematic. Okay. Or it could uh, just be a... It, or it could just be an error inside of the algorithm, honest. The, the actual algorithm. And then it just kind of ballooned out through the website. And you could just hear from Instagram. It's like, damn, sorry. We didn't mean to do that. You're all in bed now, but... The damage is already done. And let's 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 all take it to consideration. There is people that have shown way worse than their OnlyFans that do not get banned. You know, there's I, I've heard of. I people. do think it's weird because <clears throat> what if on only there's a lot of artists right now that have OnlyFans that aren't showing nudity at all because if they were, it would have gone all over the internet because that is how the internet works. So you're going to knock them off as well this just isn't this is the reason why I'm also saying it could within their within whatever device that they utilize to actually monitor and moderate their website there could be an error that when this thing leads to here or could be the server could be an IP address could be a litany of things 
when I when this sees this, ban this. And that could be it too. Oh, I. But I also don't think that they really care enough about these people to really track it down, or they could fix the issue and not really care about it because, like most people, don't see porn workers as really people. They see them as like these disgusting deviants. I think that it'd be. It might get changed just because there are a lot of celebrities that are using OnlyFans right now as a and they ruined way to it. make money. They ruined it. Oh. They ruined it. Oh, I mean. I mean that you got people showing fight videos. You got people showing guns online. They don't get banned. You got people. You got like freaking pedophiles on there. Don't get banned. People report them. Don't get banned. Have an OnlyFans on there. Oh, you're banned because you're a sex worker. I'm not saying you're a small. It's right. You're a small time sex. I'm not saying you're saying it's right, but I'm just saying like the mindset of people is just hilarious to me. Like, I, I don't, I don't get it. Mm. And I blame celebrities from even making it a popular thing. Stay in your lane. Mm. That that is true. Celebrities definitely did uh, <clears throat> blow it up, especially the one girl that like Made did the fake thing. nude. This and, is that. Those were for people that needed money essentially they don't have a well like they I mean OnlyFans literally popped up because Patreon stopped allowing sex workers to do what they were doing over, over there over there yeah so OnlyFans happened and now this was a thing and it's just like so we gonna do this thing uh and I get the whole trying to protect you know people that are underage and of course they they it, you know child porn should be monitored and taken off and everything else it's just that I feel bad for the people that rely on that income. You know, the adults that rely on that income that need that to feed their families. We're in the middle of a pandemic and you're worried about adult sex workers. Like, really? My thing is, like, I know several sex workers that uh, make adult film content, yeah. but they only fuck their boyfriend. Exactly. The, the, the person that they're fucking, they might title this and wild shit, but the nigga that they're fucking is their boyfriend. But then they're Every single time. But it's crazy their label, right? Yeah, and so it's just like, <clears throat> so yeah, they do porn, but they're not fucking a whole lot of people. The only thing that they do is allow you to watch them have sex with their significant other, really. Don't really see how that is. But I guess a lot of people don't look at it that they're like, oh no, you're out uh, here just. I'm like, oh, uh, I mean, it's literal. I'm just looking at it as the tech company, and what I see it as is just like you are no longer you are more of a detriment than you are an asset. And and like with any company, with the nature of America and the nature of capitalism. Oh uh, no! Like I said in the beginning, than an asset. You are I fully company. understand and support the right of the um, company to be like, no, nah, I'm not fucking with this, so you got to go. Because at the end of the day, it's their shit. So you can't be mad because yeah. somebody said, "Hey, I'm because I'm an only child." So we all when know, I decide I'm doing something with my shit. But we all shit. know when you Disney up a platform, then people necessarily try to go somewhere else. Like I, mean, I, I, that is true. What happened is, in MySpace? Like it's just when you try to like just what I was talking about censor people, it becomes an issue. It becomes like, well, why the hell am I on this platform? If something new comes along, be like. Bye. Some things have too much centrifugal force to fail. Like Facebook, as of this point, I don't think is ever really going to go anywhere. They may lose a significant no. amount of, lose a significant amount of their platform, but it's not going to be as popular as relevant. But it's not going to disappear. And that's all. I don't think that these ones are going to disappear the way that MySpace did because of the reason that you're so upset. I didn't and say I didn't <clears throat> say that they were going to disappear. I said they won't be as popular. You already but know. The reason that I think that that's not going to change uh-huh. is because of how upset people got over their actions because people view them all of these internet all these apps uh-huh. as the internet now. They mm-hmm. don't think of just going to a blank screen and typing in a web that being the internet. They think of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They right. think of these social medias when they think of the internet, and they're not the same. No. But since they've been married in people's minds, right. I doubt that people are going to make that separation. Even if they're mad at them, this is still the internet. Right. They just want the internet to be better, but it's not the internet. It's a corporation. It's a company that has an app on the internet. I mean, there are other people who have made, I don't know, 
I don't know what the Pinterest porn life is like, but I guarantee you that's but probably a thing. All I got to say for, be weird. for the small time sex workers, like, go on. Rogers takes fakes to hand I don't know where that came from. Create a link tree or go on like a more adult, you know, websites that you can advertise on. You can definitely create a link tree, something like that. Yeah. Like, um, Fed Life is still a thing. You can make money off of there. Like, it's different avenues. Oh, uh, I mean, there's pro. I mean, quite essentially, you just need a. See, that. There is an issue that comes along with it's just like I'm gonna be the zero censorship place like Harlow did. I mean, I'm not saying there shouldn't be zero censorship. I said, is there a line? Because I like everybody can't be fucking Disney. All right, it's just <laughs> it's oh, no, like after- I remember when YouTube was like more authentic. Now it's full of like kitties. If you say some one real thing, they're like banned. I mean, but that makes sense. I so I can explain what happened with YouTube because yes. everybody's upset with YouTube. But YouTube's thing, it's realistically y'all fault, and y'all I mean by people. <laughs> and so what happened okay. was, a lot of people would make kid videos and children, say they illegal. say they were kid videos, mm-hmm. target kids, but then maybe thirty seconds to a minute and a half through the sing songy Beautiful. bullshit. They're telling kids to kill their parents in their sleep. Okay, that's different. Mixed, no, but that was like super right. prevalent over right. Facebook or right. not Facebook, but YouTube. And so right. YouTube was losing advertisers. So okay. then YouTube was losing money because advertisers, oh, we got to get out of here because we thought we were, because these videos were getting millions and millions of views. So advertisers are they're being seen on all of these videos. No so doubt. YouTube was like, oh, bet y'all want to play? So everything that's not kid friendly, y'all can get a dick. But no, no doubt, no doubt. And you're absolutely right. But here's where I have to call out YouTube. You favoritism. You favorite people. That's fine. You favor mostly white YouTubers. Let's keep that real. You guys censor black content creators. Let's keep that real. And I have to put this on this platform. They do. I've seen that happen. But if you Mm. create your own thing... You're right. That's I'm just calling out YouTube for its hypocrisy. Oh, I mean, I mean, just YouTube is gonna stick with the dudes who make them the most money. Mm-hmm. But I also see a lot of black creators that are successful on YouTube. Oh yeah, like, they've YouTube gotten large money. enough to the point where they're large enough to the point where they won't YouTube won't really allow them to fail. Yeah, they got as many they got as many audibles as they really need to get because it's like, well, you broke that two hundred and fifty thousand sub mark. And you get videos with regularly over 500,000 views. We don't care what you do. Like, I remember that incident with Shane Dawson or whatever his name is. Um, He was targeting kids early in his career. He didn't get banned. People would report him. He didn't get banned because he was making money for YouTube. Yeah, I mean. I mean, but I just wanted to be... This is what I'm talking about. But no, that's why I said it was about YouTube losing money. I emphasized they started uh, losing I mean, advertising the money. Problems. They have and like so, the child poor thing but, going but, but they, they But there's people targeting kids, remember? YouTube. Oh. No, no, no. What they cared about is what the advertiser said about. Not, not That's why I preface the story. This was happening and the advertisers got upset. Uh-huh. YouTube doesn't give a fuck one way or the other. They're going to do... They that. have... So... They're gonna have their favorites regardless. Yes. But on a large scale, they don't give a fuck one way or the other. No. Until I they start don't. losing money. Yeah. But if you're making us money, then you're one of our favorites. And so then shut up everybody because our advertisers also don't care. So we're getting paid from them, from the advertisers and whatever. As long as the advertisers are okay with it, they're okay with it. So I, that's why y'all gotta target advertisers. I understand that, but I'm just calling out the hypocrisy. You I know, mean, it's I just, capitalism. I, I, I understand, I just it's hypocrisy a little capitalism is hypocrisy typically yeah they walk hand in hand yeah y'all care about children so much no they don't no, they uh, never said they did no I'm just being sarcastic can I be sarcastic oh, I was like oh. Oh. I was like no like, YouTube is definitely doesn't care about kids Sony are completely so, totally in the uh, pragmatic I don't problem. want them nasty 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 sex workers on my page how dare they yeah how dare they we got twelve year olds on the bitch you now. They get yeah, you don't want the random meandering into your OnlyFans and they get right. the last thing we wanna see is yep. Last thing mom wants to see is like you next thing you know you got a twenty dollar charge for our OnlyFans on there and then they're like, <laughs> Where did this come from, Bill? 
I don't know what you're talking about. If I come out with any other platforms you smaller sex workers can post on, I'll let you know. I forgot the other names. But. I mean, you used to be able to do Tumblr. Can't do that. Uh, Twitter, you still can. Twitter, you can't say it. Still, do whatever still. you want on Twitter. No. <laughs> Twitter want to keep their money. Like, honestly, <laughs> there's this weird Japanese version of OnlyFans that exists. Huh? They don't get banned. So, create your link trees and get on Japanese they, they, fans. They'll be next. They'll be in those to watch. Oh, uh, they can't. Well, you you would have to be able to understand the language in order to moderate it. And the thing about most Asian countries is they have a Instagram or whatever equivalent. So they have something else that they can go to. The the issue is here is that people are intrinsically lazy. So when someone creates something new and it doesn't already have an established base. People don't want to migrate over to this other platform because it doesn't already have a base and there's nothing in it. Like, like Clubhouse. Oh. I remember that was a small entity. I wanted to join because you can network off of there. And now it's a freaking cesspool of just people talking shit. It's kind of like, okay. I mean. And I don't have I don't have Apple. It used to be able, you didn't have to have Apple. They had a They had an app. For non Apple users. Don't, I got Apple. Uh, what are you, aren't you on Clubhouse now, Tony? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Tony. I'm just saying. I thought Tony was just sitting there quiet, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, I'm on Clubhouse. I, I don't, but I'll, I'll shut up. Like, no, no, I'm not talking about it's everybody. Apple yes. It's now, it's now Apple exclusive. And and there's still celebrities on it, they're still talking. That's just a very you, you can still get choice. access to everybody. I mean, right Apple now phone. you can get because fuck Apple. I'll that's never get another Apple phone. Huh? That's what I want. I'll, I'll explain to you after. Oh, I the understand shop. the artificially scarcity thing. It's just like it was just weird that they only chose like limiting your user base to purely Apple customers is just like an odd thing because they are fickle, fickle, fickle people. They are. No, it makes the most sense. It's folks like me just want to build Apple's, their network. And Apple's it's generally like, the most secure. <laughs> Incorrect, Amundo. Apple has had more leaks than like Google has ever really had. I have a Google phone for a reason. I hate. Apple. I don't hate Apple. I it's hate just Apple. Like Apple leaks shit. It's happened. Every They've had their for. Uh-huh. It's like Google can't leak. Like Google has like a higher level of encryption. Apple doesn't update their security all the time. They have all types of issues. They just kind of bank on the fact that because of the fact that they are not the largest user base inside of the world, that no one wants to really fuck with them until they do. But typically, when something wild happens on the internet, it's like, well, how did the fapping happen? Well, Apple Cloud Base got hacked. How did this happen? Apple Cloud Base. Got What's hacked. a smaller? The plat- fapping is my one of my favorite websites. <laughs> The what? The fapping. Fapping. Yeah. What's a smaller platform than Clubhouse that I can join? Do y'all know? Mm-hmm. Small social networks just kind of don't survive typically. I mean, <sighs> no. The reason that Clubhouse is popular Pinterest? is because of what it did. I mean, like for business people that, you know. Just, Go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I mean, that. And They're working harder to make theirs more of a social network. It's not really functioning. It's still just a job application that, thing. <laughs> I don't. Like the fact that they keep telling you, you got notifications, notifications on LinkedIn. I mean, like, because oh, yeah. you can update the wall and stuff. They want to change the perception of it. It hasn't worked, but that's what they want to do. I don't know. I want um, to stay the same. Clubhouse worked because it was exclusive. And the reason that it was good for networking is because you had the access to all of these high-level people. Oh, no doubt. I'm not saying but that. that's the only reason that right. it was small enough and it grew is because it did like that. There's another... They'd have to, and the reason that they went there is because it offered a unique feature. None of the other apps offer just free form conversation. Uh-huh. It's similar to Twitter, but less congested because it's not a full time feed. So you go in there. This is the conversation right. that you want to have because it's segregated into different rooms. And so you can go into a room inside the chat house and uh, or clubhouse, excuse me. And it'd be about like, let me open it right now. I can tell you. Oh. Ew. Right now, there's a virtual dinner party, which has Van Jones in it. Um, you can stop the cab. 
with Joe Budden that he's in there right now. Um, Bo Bonnie, he's in the um, Passion Baby. But if you explore the world, there's Let's Build Smart Cities and Villages, Sideman versus Romans Clash, um, How to Build a Big Business with No Investors. And so, if you go in there, there's it's about what you're building. I think it's a really cool business. And, they just um, right. It's you know, a room full of people, and they just give information. So, I mean, I don't think that it's a bad thing, but no, it's not a bad thing. Like I'm, all, I don't think there's anything else that offers it because, like I said, it offers a unique experience, unique experience of talking where none of the other. So you'd have to find another app that is going to tap into something that's unique, mm-hmm. or does something infinitely better than one of the ones that exist does right now. Like, I'm a wholesaler right now. That would be a good app for me to 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 conversate and build up a buyer's list. Oh, yeah, there's lots like, of investors in there and angel exactly. investors in there and everything. Like, I would have loved to know about it before it got to that. I mean, no, you, you know. still could get in and talk. I don't got Apple. Oh. So. I mean, oh, yeah. It used to be able you could. Now you can't. You can't even get the app. Well, I think they probably just took it back. When you increase the size of your user base or the potential user base and people don't grab onto it, one, it's probably not worth maintaining the stuff that you need to actually keep it on everything. Two, it looks kind of bad. When you go from, all right, one out of every, like three out of every 10 iPhone users. Use also, this. the experience on Android is much more fragmented than the experience on Apple. Yeah, you gotta build for a lot more phones. And so that intuitively isn't where your developers tend to lean when they first start out. The, it costs more to develop on Apple, but there's, to a certain degree, you don't have to support, like, you have to support, like, a Moto Droid. Yeah, the, the Google, the Droid. Like, there's, like, six phones over Samsung. here in, in Android world that you have to support where once I get this built and stable on the iOS... That's it. And I just have to keep this stable and good right. instead of make six of them and then make sure all six are stable and good. Right. It might be cheaper, but I have to do a lot more work. Yeah, I hit it, but I mean, it doesn't do anything for me. Do I, that, that is also very true. Yeah. It doesn't do anything for me, so it's not helpful this at isn't. All. I don't know if. It, I don't, is Clubhouse even available in non app form? I don't know. Like, yeah, I, don't I mean, you might so. be able to get a cheapo iPad or something and put it on there. I mean, I don't even be on Clubhouse. Yeah, I mean, you got on there and you stopped caring. I, I mean, I need to honestly, I need to be on there more so that way I can invite you on. Oh, but it's useless or, to me. Oh fuck! You don't have an iPhone either. <laughs> it's useless to me. Well, see, I figured if I invite somebody else on, then we can like. Unless you just got a random erroneous iPhone around here that I can use. We could start it. I probably, I probably could have you sit around here and use my iPhone uh, ten. Uh, when we do it, because like, I would love to like start a room and just have conversation in there. Or that you would could be get a, it on your iPad. I would, I could use it. On I could get on there too. Yeah. So yeah, we could do that. So I'll get you an invite, because I know people that have invites. Okay, but yeah, but I mean, we can work it out. Yeah, if I just used it more, I could get invites. Like they give you more invites the more you use the app. But like the stuff around Clubhouse is interesting. Like the way they're distributing invites, the way the actual method in which they're de- like developing the scarcity and they're making sure that people that are actually in the that are active. Because I'm guessing that pe- if one person is active and they like it, they're more likely to invite. And the other people see that person being active on it, they're more likely to be active with that person. So you're trying to actually get and actually build up a reasonable user base before you like go out into the wild. Does yeah, that makes sense. So, that, but that's also why I would like if we can start a room there. So I'll work on getting you an invite because if we can start a room in there, um, you can garner some good attention and good conversation. Well, I mean, I don't know how many nerds are running around in there for my types of stuff, but that's a decent bit. I mean, I have stuff. From what I've seen. Is delineated to <sighs> if you known locally in the city, you probably on Clubhouse now. Yeah. Oh. 
Like, if you in that, like, mixy lifestyle. Mixy lifestyle? Yeah. Like, at, at a point, I used to be very out and about, and uh, wherever it was, like, like events were happening and kicking it and shit like that. Yeah. Tony was out in these streets for a good three to four years. And then I stopped being out in the streets. Yeah. But I have a lot of connections still. It's so like, that's I don't like this. Yeah, that's how I ended up with this. Like one of my homies was like on uh IG I was like, I got one invite left who won it, DM me and I was like, shit, send me that. And he's like big man. So literally just send me the invitation and that's how I got on. So I just know people that are still mixy and shit like that that have connections like that. So that's how I end it. But I do know the people that are that I've seen on the webs uh, on there at least like because it shows you who invited you and then who invited them. Like you can like do a trail back and shit like that. So when I just go through and see the other people that I know that are on there, it's all. So one, I'll say it's a lot of women, but it's a lot of women that I know that are known in the city. Like they're very mixy women. And not necessarily makes it in a bad way, but they might be hostess. They might, like, be out on a club scene. But, like, they're known. So, yeah, they're my event planner, shit like that. Oh, well, I mean, it seems like a tool that can be used to do things. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which is more so what I'm worried about. So, and it's like, you can have post-anime watch discussions, or you can do post something or like say we go see a marvel movie it's just like hey we're about to be on the clubhouse we're about to talk about this and yeah meet up with us over there yes so that's <laughs> what i want to do so that's why uh, that's why i need to get you an invite so i will actually text and see if i can get that done right now see uh, whenever they open up the platform i ask for an invite oh uh, i mean when they open up the platform you'll probably just be able to join yourself Oh, I don't know how this gonna work. They may, I don't know. Slow rollouts only last for so long. But no, slow rolls. But I'm saying when they open it up, I mean, you could probably privatize your room. You uh, know, you like, can make private rooms. Yeah, but you don't have to. Probably privatize the rooms to start doing that. I mean, they hit you with that premium clubhouse membership. Yeah, they'll probably start doing that. They should have did that. They made more money. Oh, you don't want to do that too. I'm gonna go subscribe to the OnlyFans. They said you needed some medical. Oh, my mom said we get it free. So if you think you're gonna be in a relationship with a bisexual man, you think it's gonna work? It's never going to work. They're always gonna be. That's what the guy said earlier. Yeah, they're always going to be with a man that's gonna stick his stuff in his stuff. (laughs) And that's what he's going to do. She sounds incredibly jaded about it. Yeah, show the wrong. Somebody hurt her. This is Stop the Cat. What do you really want from the opposite sex? So that's the room that I'm in right now. So bisexual people are just out here fucking everybody. No, just bisexual men. But why does... Hold on. <laughs> I feel like we unearthed the whole there, thing. There, there's a whole stigma towards men right. being bisexual and women not identifying or accepting that. Here's That's why men are on the down low so much. Yeah. Because women I agree. refuse to allow it. men to have a sexual spectrum. Yeah. It's either you're straight or you're gay. So men are like, well, fuck it then. I'm straight. Right. Or they're like, I'm out and I'm gay. And I'm- but there's no real, like, gray area for and me. I hate and I hate that stigma like I think it's just what are you like what she was talking about I'm like well have you sis have you dated a bisexual man have you it sounds like she had a real bad experience I mean oh, what's he on a oh Gail King's in his room oh really yeah well the, the real I'm in a virtual dinner party with Gail King Terry Crews um who is this this is London Breed she's a moderator for the room she's speaking committed to San Francisco I'm really proud to have them on my team a straight man that can't be about the future yes we know that there are some challenges and good partners making like decisions <laughs> because of not just this pandemic but because of the economy because of the taxes and a lot of the stories are you, that you, are you about, looking for someone to give me an invite in oh no i already text him like i, I i'm i'm San just San seeing what's going on in there but yeah no there women no definitely don't allow men to be a uh, well majority let's say majority of women yeah. Uh, yeah when i speak i'm speaking in a spectrum in general yeah i don't know I've never had to worry about being bisexual dude in a relationship. I mean, so. no, I've never had to worry about it. Right. But when I talk about, like, I've had conversations with women where they're like, well, I don't understand why a man would um, hide his sexuality. Really? You, you just you, 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 you don't yeah. understand. Yeah. 
Because if he tells you, even if a man identifies now today as straight, he would be hesitant to tell you about a, um, a, less, a homosexual experience that he had in his past because you're still going to say he's gay. And that's why. I think Just that, that very sentiment, like, oh, yeah. so you had sex with a man before? Yeah, one time while I was in college, I got drunk and uh, me and him just wanted to experiment. It's not an acceptable story from a guy. Mm. And since that's not an acceptable story, it's not gonna hear it. So that's why it's less prevalent that it gets told. That's why there's a whole community of people that are like, oh, he was on the down low. And I don't understand. Oh, I mean, there's less of a fetishization of male on male as opposed to male on female. Yeah. Female on female because there are a lot of dudes who's just like, yeah, two girls make it out. This is not. And guys are pretty gross. So it's just like two, two guys dudes. kissing is pretty disgusting. And I also don't I don't want to see that. But I also, I also don't want to see, see two women. girls kissing either. I'll, I also don't see very many women who are. I don't want to see people kissing. Like, <laughs> you just because you, like, you see the spit. Like, no. if you, you ever seen like You're people kissing? Going it? down the slippery. Because you see the spit in people's mouth, and that is nasty. <laughs> Like when they get their tongue and other people's tongue. Tony's not much of a kisser. <laughs> Tony doesn't like public displays of affection. From other me. people. From other people. I don't need that. But I do think that it's weird. I don't know. Women don't, aren't really into dudes just making out. So. Eh. I mean, I'm not saying that that is ubiquitously is not true for some women. But in general, like... I don't think there's probably too much, too many women coming in to do those. I just think that it's a, a stigma that, uh, not even like a, pre- a not, I can't say not prevalent. It's just not a stigma that affects me. But I do, if I have a conversation, get annoyed when women are like, oh, men are so uh, guarded and things like that. There's very little that we're allowed to be open about without being judged. Right. Either our masculinity is questioned, our sexuality is questioned. Um. So until those things stop, you don't really foster an environment that breeds, you know, openness, expressiveness. Oh, it's just not a natural performer our state to be. It's like yeah, but if you always grow up around people saying, uh, "Toughen up, be a man," or if he's soft, oh, he's a pussy. It just doesn't put you in the environment to be like, yo, let me be that. It's real weird dealing with like the kindness thing because one of those things where it's just like, I think we had this conversation inside of a past podcast where like men aren't just allowed to be kind to people. No. It's just like. We're treated as weird if we're just kind. It's just like, oh. Like I find that, like, I don't know, maybe I'm a little different. But I like for my partner to be open with me. Like, all the way open. Like, it doesn't bother me. It personally does not oh, no, bother me. I, I definitely me. think that there's certain women that are, are it, like counterintuitive to, like, the general spectrum. And I feel like a lot of people come into relationships with, like, this freaking mask. Like, they think they can mask forever. Oh, I'm this ultra, you know, dominant man. When you're really not. Well, I mean, everybody... It's, it, to think that they, are they, they, they want to think that they're but if you're not it's okay you know I think women yeah women can put pressure on men to be a certain way a certain height a certain you know everything everything and that's that's like that's like look we all don't like steak you know <laughs> like stop doing that just like that clubhouse thing I would have oh. Or it's like when I read... Like, what are you talking about, lady? I've been online or watched, like, Kevin on stage, and he'll read stuff where, like, all, especially third in 2020, it's like, if you um, and your homie go to breakfast in the morning, I just think that's gay. Y'all can't tell me nothing. So me and my mans can't have a business meeting in the morning and want to get some food. We can't be hungry. Everything is Uh-oh. fucking gay. It's like, men shouldn't order appetizers or dessert. I just think that's gay. You should just have your... That's real feminine. He should just order his meal. Oh, my God. I like junk food. I'm eating this cheesecake. Get the fuck out of my face, dude. It's gay. I, I can't order have... Dessert. <laughs> some nachos as my appetizer? <laughs> I can't want some breadsticks? Uh, 
I mean, I truly Some believe wings. that dudes that are like that are probably actually the gay ones. Yeah. But no, it was women saying this. Oh. I, yes. Yeah. That's very upsetting. That exactly. Is true. And so that's my thing. It's like, so I don't. So what are men allowed to do? Like I know women <laughs> like that, and then and so that's what I'm saying. Like for me, I don't care what men think. It's oh, me that no. I know that women that are very like restrictive and boxing of where a man can like yeah. be at to be considered like oh he's a man, and then everything else that's not that isn't. Like I've met women, personally because I talk to women, blah blah. I know women like that, and then they'll be confused why it's hard for them to date. I'm like, well... You got all these qualifiers. You got all these qualifiers. I'm looking at it. I mean, it's good to have qualifications. I Everybody say, does. I you can't have them. But, but when it's you start like, with, you can't order appetizers, that's a, girl, that's a legitimate hurdle. <laughs> I'm like, really? This is an issue for you? I'm like, all right, well... He got all the he got all the other things like, checked off. Like girls, girls appetizer. go in there and be like, "Well, I have a hard time dating on Tinder and blah blah blah." I'm like, I had a good time on Tinder. I don't like it. It it all it was what you make of it. Like, I I agree with that. I just think that, <laughs> and just like. Like how I told you about how because I knew my colors and I worked out and cared about like my appearance, the women that I that I first met in Seattle thought I was gay. Like just that perception is like. I mean, that's the weird thing because like saying you because you care about how you look is like dudes care about colors and the way they look. I mean, there wouldn't be an entire men's fashion line if we didn't. Hair. We would all not just wear gray colors inside of Now they think that all the men that are in the men's that are men's fashion are um gay males that in orchestrated. So oh. me being into the colors and everything like that. They're gonna be very <laughs> upset when they realize a lot of these dudes who are making this women's clothing also aren't gay. And but just for me it's just like, no, I'm not, but just that your identity of what a man has to be is well, you gotta be these things. I don't know. This I and think a lot just of people, pretty chill. I, it, I don't know. It comes down to the well role models that they have inside of their lives. I think it's just like it, what you see is what you believe that other people are supposed to be. I would agree with that if that wasn't the case for like. What's the best way to say this? It's not rude. Like. <laughs> No, no, no. So, say, say it on the mic. So that demographic of people, like single mothers, I know a lot okay. of single mothers that'd be like, I'm not going to let my son grow up soft. And what you realistically mean is you're not going to let your son grow up showing emotion yeah. and crying and things like that because she needs. you think he needs to be overly hard because he doesn't have a what you consider a male role model in his life. Well, that's what you think men are mm-hmm. supposed to be. Yeah, and so you get a lot of that situation, or they raise daughters that view men that aren't that stereotypical version as less than a man. So that's the issue. It's like, well, I'm a person, and shit makes me upset sometimes. And not upset in a, I want to be hostile, but I'm I'm just generally sad, or I'm disappointed or I'm depressed or I'm just in my feelings in uh, numerous types of ways just like any other human being but that is generally not accepted in our community yeah so yeah I'll say that oh uh, I've had varying experiences I've never actually that's a weird thing I never actually charted like I've already told everybody about the honest experiences that I've had Shaker was very open in that way where you could well, I, our so friend group, upon where you our are friend, really our there. friend group, and the group that we cultivated, like the tree people, we had a very open community. Yeah, I mean structurally, and we were very insulated. Like we didn't really have like any outsiders try and come in and like. We were very hostile to random outside people. We were, like, who and, are you? and it was like fifty of us, so it wasn't like. If you're a lone bully, you had the upper hand on us because it was a lot of us still. Oh, no. But we were also, like, very weird, nerdy kids that, like, one of us is hopping around the front yard like a frog (laughs) and doing spin kicks. No, like, dead ass hopping around the front yard like a frog. I wasn't being hyperbolic at all. (laughs) I want y'all to know, like, that's what he did. 
we would lay up under the big ass tree in the front of the yard. Like it's just what we did, but but if you we were allowed messing around to somebody, be that in, face. in that place. But I know a lot of people who didn't have that high school experience where if you didn't fit the stereotypical black persona, you weren't allowed to be that. Like, Shit, I could say brush was not that at all, where that's how I ended up starting like a little fake... Uh, gang? Yeah, a little fake gang out here where... Wait a minute, brush had a gang? Well, 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 not really. Many a gangs. Many a gangs, but it was they were all not fake, actual. but not like real. Like people one. would claim blood at Shaker, or they would claim something oh, at you Shaker. Mean that squad people? And I'm like, bye. Like I, I mean, just uh, whatever. They, they were still knew. fighting, but I. But even in the Shaker, like the Goon Squad didn't fuck with people like Charles or myself. Where if we wanted to go play cards or play Pokemon or play Magic right, right. or do whatever. The Goon Squad was fully dedicated with, all right, these people that are uh, in our sphere, this is who we're fucking with. Those people do that. And so that, Shaker is a perfect dichotomy of what I want to create. Where all the blacks are allowed to do the, thing. do the things. But Ain't gonna happen. But then can put on Sankofa. Ain't gonna happen. Because <laughs> we're not unified. We're not unified. Oh yeah, that's a whole club conversation. I got, to I got, no, I no, got. Not today. It, it's I got. Just, hold on, hold on. Let me speak one minute. I got banned for having a different opinion, and I wasn't being rude about it. Well, it's just, it's just, you can't talk to liberal black people, like far left black people. You just can't. You just can't have a civil conversation because it ends up being, well, you're, you're a hardcore conservative. Oh, you're a Candace Owens fan. I'm like. You don't, but I think the issue is that y'all are always trying to have conversations about shit that's unimportant. I just left it alone. Y'all got to stop because y'all. But it was an important conversation. It was. What was it about? Saying that we should burn down the house again, or we should burn down the, we should riot again, basically, because of um, who's the person I didn't go to jail for? Not Trayvon, but um. Uh, ooh. The little boy who had the toy gun. Oh, the the tra- officer. Oh, the Trayvon Martin killing? Not the Trayvon Martin. Um, the fact that we can't, we don't know who this is. <laughs> no, is I, I I know who this is. Well, no, I'm saying it's he just do? like the. He had was, a toy gun and an officer shot oh, him in like five Tamir seconds. Rice. T- Tamir Rice. Yeah, I'm sorry. So start with a T. I was uh, daydreaming about um, your creation. Yeah, well, realistically, <laughs> it's just like one of the groups went off to, to go spray. set the thing on fire, and the other groups were like, "No, nah, we're not with that." But you can use your resources to do that if you want to, and so they did it, and then it did work out the way they wanted. And they came back to the group and they're like, "Well, see, we told you." But so that's how I look at it. It's like if they want to set it on fire, cool. I mean, cool. But what's that? I mean, oh, why does that matter? Which y'all? Sh- but but I'm talking about afterwards. Does anything <sighs> change? No. But I guess not. No, oh, oh. it hasn't. But no. it's not there anymore. I mean, <laughs> doing something else twice, what is but that going to do? So like, my, is that insanity? But my point is like this. Uh-huh. So if their end goal is the advancement of black people. And, we're advancing. You, and, and your end goal is the advancement of black people, right? Of course. Then the conversation shouldn't be, well, why are you setting this on fire? It should be, all right, so... It wasn't why. Not it even, wasn't why. Not, it even was, not even how. All right, so what are the things that you think are I said, goals well, for black people to be advanced in? I said, I asked, okay, we've already done that. What is that going to do? So that's why. So again, that, again, so you asked them why. That doesn't matter. So the why they're doing it isn't important. So what you need to work, because that's not your fight. If they want to... What people do, like... You and Ash do it a lot, I would say. Y'all feel a way and then expect everybody else to recognize the truths that y'all have been able to attain and move in that fashion because it would would be a more logical and beneficial way. While that might be true, that's not how reality works. Reality says that you get to do what you see fit and is best for you and the people that you identify and that also identify with that Uh are probably going to move in that way. But there's going to be other people that move in a di- different direction. So if they're going to move in a different direction, but y'all goals are ultimately the same, the most beneficial thing to do is talk about, all right, so we want to advance from A to Z. So y'all are going to go set this thing on fire. All right, cool. We're not going to go do that with y'all. But that's not going to help me out. 
and you're in the short term. So y'all are going to go do that. How do y'all, where do, how do y'all plan to get to Z? And so now take the things that they actually have that are useful to get to Z that you can work with and work with those things. And the other things that you don't agree with aren't the things that you align with. And that's how we continue to move forward. But everybody's so focused on, oh, no, the thing that you're going to do that I don't agree with, I need to make sure that you know I don't agree with that and make you see my perspective some, why you don't agree with it. Because sometimes plan, your plan backfires on my plan. Sometimes your plan interferes with my plan. You see what I'm saying? How? Mm. How? Yeah. So you don't think the way that we are perceived doesn't that's it, it, it doesn't well, help our cause it, at all. So so if we're go- we can't play re- at this point. Uh-huh. If you want to play respectability politics, it's because not that respectability is respectability. It's called smart politics. So it's, it, if you want to call it by a different name, that's fine. It's not because a people name. take offense to respectability politics. It's, we can say if we want to play the political game to appear one way, that's fine. But we're also. I also could understand people who say, hey, we're viewed this way and us trying to acquiesce to the way that they want to see us hasn't worked. And so we're going to do it this way. I can't say that doesn't have credence. I can't say that, hey, I haven't seen a group of people who dress nicely or focus on self-investment and self-worth and self-growth do that and not worry about what was it what else was going on, Mm -hmm. be successful, and then also get killed. So I've seen both things happen. That's exactly right. So, But we're talking about a large scale. So we can talk about the large scale who's actually getting shot and killed. The people, so there wasn't Black Wall Street and they weren't bombed? That, we're talking about today's society, right? In 2020. But, no, I'm talking, 20, what I'm talking about is the examples we, of what I've seen. To, that, that is Black Wall Street we're talking about in 2020. But so I've seen you Absolutely. look... I mean, Harlem. Uh, but that was the, how many years ago? There in was 2020. Fires, I, I've seen us look the part, play the part, and it's still not working. Okay. I've seen us also riot, not look the part, not play the part, and it also not work. So I'm not saying that either side works, but I'm saying that if you want to try something... Mm-hmm. That's your right to because that's how you view it. That's how, in your worldview, you've seen the modicums of successes inside of this way of doing things as being worthy of you getting behind and championing that. But I don't think that means that somebody else's cause is less than because your cause is this. I just mean you do that. But two people, we were too worried about, well, if I'm doing this, you got to be doing this too. That's not true. If our overall goal is this, mm-hmm. just because you want to look a certain way, you feel a way about what I'm doing. If your way is so correct, then my way will come to an extinction and the people that you have aligned with and the goals that y'all have set forth will be powerful and will change the narrative on what we look like. But if you're so worried and think that I'm so powerful in what me and my group do to change the full perspective on what they think about black people, then how powerful do you think your mission so you is don't in your group? Think, so you don't think the way that we are perceived in the media, the way that we perceive doesn't doesn't saying. hurt? It, it, but it's aligning. That's not, no, it's it's not, aligning. not, it's not what I it's said. Not what I said. No, what I said is uh-huh. we're perceived like that. Uh huh. But that has been and has been the case for quite some time. Yeah. It hasn't changed when we've tried to. But. We can use that excuse, but now we no, are... I'm not saying we, that we can't do that. We I'm are not, now perpetuating that. We, no, we aren't. I'm, not, I'm not saying you shouldn't... Mm. What I'm not... So I guess... So what you're taking it as is me saying you shouldn't do... You shouldn't... Um, Try to alter the perception of African Americans. Yeah, I'm not saying that that's not sh- what should be worked on. But I'm saying if that's what you want to work on and you want to mm-hmm. change the way pe- black people are perceived and you see that as being attained by doing specific things which is what it sounds like you're saying not saying let's let, not call it respectability politics but you want to change the perception of, on blacks and you think that by us doing certain things that would be the best way for us to advance is that correct in a certain level yeah okay so I don't think there's anything wrong with that but I think that you can do that simultaneously while other people do something different that has no bearing on that and that's where people have the issue. It's everybody feels like, oh, we all have to be on one accord, and that's not the case. 
like the Republican Party does a lot of different things simultaneously. It's very limiting in saying black people have to be a monolith and all agree with this one thing and we all have to be viewed this one way. The Republican Party, and the reason that I keep using them is because I view the Democrats as weak. The Republican Party, when they want to get something done that's yeah. very major, they all shut up regardless of how they feel about each other and they take care of it. And then they go back to doing whatever the fuck they wanted to be doing individually and regardless of how it makes somebody else feel or how it makes them look, they continue to focus on what their constituents want and the goals that they have individually. And I don't see why that's such an issue for us. It's like we can do two things at once. We don't have to be like the Democrats and try and force everybody to identify with one narrow perspective. You're talking about the conservative party, which is a smaller party. We're a whole population. So, I mean, I get what you're saying. I'm talking about... Honestly, ideas. as of right now, I would say there are more actual Republicans than probably cumulatively of black people. Yeah, because black people are also Republicans, so. There's like, there are white Republicans, there are Asian Republicans, there are uh, Cuban Republicans, there are Mexican Republicans. That is, but he, they're capable of unifying their entire group and throwing them behind an, one objective, even though, even if that objective is not necessarily advantageous to the people. We heard for four years how much Ooh. the Republicans didn't get along with Trump, right? But Ugh. also during those four years, not once did we see the Republicans go against the main authority yeah. and stop anything from happening. They would renege on anything that they said. Until and recent. But until yeah. recent when he was no yeah. longer in power. But and right. even still now, they're still like tap dancing they're and silent. slow walking. Yeah, so that's right. my thing. We do a lot of infighting because we believe that oh, we all have to align with this one thing where we could take a lot of inspiration from the Republicans who don't all agree, don't all get along. There's some far-leaning right conservatives that hey blacks there's some more money focused conservatives that don't care about any color besides green but they all can come together and be like you know what we know that we don't want that shit to happen so that's not going to happen so no to that and then after it's no to that we can get to fighting but everything else is what we've decided is going to be because we've said no to that it's pretty much we can fight with each other, but you can't. Yeah, and so, but we don't treat it like that. It's not where we have, we don't have the space and we don't allow each other the space to be different, even in philo- philosophy or ideology. It's if we think differently, it's, oh, I have to beat you over the head until you agree with me or you see this perspective. I get this a lot with like black interests. But I wasn't where, beating that person over the head. They just couldn't come to the realization that there are I'm not other saying black that you, people. When I say that, right. I'm not speaking specifically towards you. I'm just speaking like ad towards ad nauseum of how we operate in general. And I'm saying that y'all conversation, while maybe not be beating, isn't a productive conversation. Y'all trying to it's exchange, not, not well, really. We're not supposed to have productive conversation amongst each other. You so, are, but that's not, see, you wh- took it personally because. No, 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 I'm just saying with black people, you just said, black. you wish black people could come together, right? But that's so, not what I just, so like I said, you took it personally because I said y'all didn't have a productive conversation. What would have been, pro- what would have been productive would have been talking about what y'all actually, which goals that y'all want to move forward. Of, yeah, what do y'all hope to get that. forward? So instead of challenging and saying, all right, well, this isn't going to work. All right, what do you hope to get out of it and try and find some commonality and some advancement where, all right, I don't necessarily agree with all your methodology, but I can see that you want to still push black people forward like I do. And so since that's our base and our common ground, I can see these things as things that I can help get behind and champion. And these other things that you want to do, I don't agree with. And so if those are what you want to push forward, that's fine. And you do so. So I think that would have been a much more productive conversation and no one would have got blocked and y'all could have formed a stronger union instead of being separate. And so Absolutely. that's my point. You're right. Where there's a lot of just conversations that lead to, well, we have these different opinions and so fuck it, I'm over here and you're over there instead of us agreeing, all right, well, this is the common ground. Let's take this common ground and move forward in the common ground and everything is different. You deal with whatever your differences are and you work on those because that's what right. you want to focus on. And I'm going to focus on the different things that you don't agree with because those are the things that I want to focus on. And when we both do it align with, let's do that together. Yeah, you're right. And so that's where are. I think that we could oh, do better at. Me and Tony had a whole conversation about this prior, so it's fairly well thought out as at this point. 
because we were talking about something about Marcus Garvey and like how flying, how leaving and going to Africa like, wasn't ever. Yeah, no, that doesn't make sense. Because like I look at that and it's just like I have a my current boss is actually was really big and he's lived in Africa some, for some point in time and like being around other. Nigerian people and stuff like that. It's like, yo, I hate to tell you all this, and everyone who thinks running Africa is actually going to fix something, they don't think of us that great over there either. <laughs> Didn't they try to do that with us? Oh, yeah, that's the entire Marcus Garvey movie. Yeah, well, Marcus they, Garvey wanted us to go back to Africa. But and, wasn't there a group that did go back to Africa? Yeah, yeah. They weren't welcomed at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that's what, but that, so my thing isn't that, is we don't need to go anywhere to we for acceptance. We just need to. Understand that, hey, we all might have different perspectives, come from different economic and sociological backgrounds. Where Charles grew up with both parents in his household, right. and they've been married for his entire time of his existence. Where uh, my dad was in prison for the last 10 years, and mine was just divorced. Yeah, I had said, my dad, and you had your dad, but he was divorced, and mine wasn't ever in my life because right. he was a drug dealer. So We've all had different backgrounds, and just to be able to accept that, and be like, all right, so you might have a different perspective or way that you want to get to certain things because of the way that you see things. But what can I find in common with that? Like me and Charles disagree on a lot of shit. Yeah, but that's not like I completely and totally run off Tony for any particular one thing. Exactly. So, like, we found common ground and we move forward in that. It was like we're willing to work together in business and a lot of other things. It's just like, but. There's just certain fundamental things. There's just I just kind of look at it like, eh, like he's more of so the black gun ownership thing, and it's like I'm I'm not necessarily against that. I can see the angle that it's working, but I don't necessarily think that's going to be the fit. Defense is kind of a holding pattern, whereas like there are other things that we can do to actually have forward momentum. And I just kind of look at a lot of things like, and I think that's a fair point. I yeah. yeah. But that, but the fact that I want or would invest in guns and do things like that, and that's where I think like, or I agree with like, the Second Amendment and would defend that. He's not going to support that, and so me and him could argue about that, and then be like, you know, what? he also knows he's never going to come for me for for Second Amendment defenses. Like. Yeah, but if we let's say our conversation started there and we argued about that and never found any common ground, we would have never built anything that we have going right now yes. and how wasteful would that have been because of fucking one disagreement there's so much common ground that it could be found uh, yeah it's just like I do agree people that are that, sensitive I don't know most people don't exist like ad nauseum like you I would say you or I because we are tend to do logic paramount over most things inside of a lot of situations except for when you actually do tap into our emotions which is on a very few things like there's you don't get me being emotional about a lot of things no it, but even if I'm emotional I feel like there is a certain level of but you're you're capable of separation that needs to be had like if I'm um, emotional I have like a the wherewithal 48 is. hour rule where you got, all right, I'm going to take these next two days to feel how I feel. Either I'm going to be really sad, I'm going to be really frustrated, I'm probably not going to talk to anybody. I'm going to just be in my feelings, and I'm going to let that just go the way that it's going to go. But after that, I've wasted two days on this, and honestly, nothing changed. So now it's time for me to do something productive about this and actually change the way that I'm feeling. Mm. Because right, I let myself feel how I was feeling, and that's and I think that's healthy, but me feeling how I'm feeling... And operating off of that doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Oh. What I'll say in terms of like the differences inside of what you guys were initially speaking about is you should plan for the other side to do stuff to a certain degree. Like as a person who I do believe a lot of white people will view me as like one of the ideal black people. I got my college education, I got yeah. a four year degree. I have a ridiculous amount of student loan debt. I have a functional household. We have generate. We built up a decent amount of generational wealth. We have multiple houses within the family that people are going to inherit. We got all that shit. And it's just like people like me can look at, can go deal with white people and be like, 
well, why don't you go talk, talk to the black people who are rioting and get them to stop burning down? Well, Charles did it. Anybody can do it. Well, kind of like that. Yeah. Well, okay. But when I go talk to them, it's just like, well, what do you got to do? I mean, really? I, but you, I can go talk to those white people and say, well, it's, honestly, you think what they want is wild, but it's really not. If you really look at it and you analyze it and because they respect me to a certain degree, they look at it like, oh, well, when you put it, put it to us like that, it's not that wild. And then they actually... You can use the riots as leverage to get what you want, and that's ultimately the thing that's lacking in a lot of these, in a, in a lot of these rallies and stuff like that. They're not using the leverage that they have. They are the lever, but there's nobody who's pulling that lever. Like pretty much, I would say MLK is probably was that lever. Like where Malcolm X and those that active and like more so militant group was like the lever. MLK was probably pulling on that said lever. And it's just like, oh, well, you got this dude who's giving us a solution for a problem. If we just end segregation, this, they'll stop burning down our shit. So, you know what? We're good. We're going to stop that. Even though it's not going to stop racism, we know that. But they got what they wanted and they chilled out. But, yeah, no, I agree with that. I, I think that is ultimately, at this point, either... I think that at this point, we're finally at a point where we have the bandwidth to have this conversation. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot more white people that view it. Oh, no, not even the white people. I don't care about them. Oh. I, I meant black people <laughs> having a conversation of nuance and like being able to have the space to disagree. Like, I don't think that up until this point, not to sound like corny or anything like black consciousness was at a state where you could really articulate any of this and not get an overly emotional response that shut down the rest of the conversation yeah I mean we're different. I'm talking about not the ashy fake deep slash hotep dude it's like I don't really count them as black intellectuals because a lot of times they aren't really talk. I see a lot of those dudes, they're just kind of forwarding their own agenda. They're not actually forwarding the black, the white, black people in general. It's like, well, this is what black people need to do. This is what we need to do. And buy my African soap. It's like... <laughs> and buy my African soap. This is like, who makes the African soap? My third wife. <laughs> oh, she got a third husband too? Does she got another husband? No, she can't have no one. but that's why <laughs> you also invite them to the table and allow them to have whoever their constituents are. And then when it's time to move on these agendas that we've agreed to as a group, like you got to you got to use your resources as well, sir. And then when you input your resources, then cool, that's fine. And, and to other, a certain degree, and other we than stop that. airing each other out in front of stop like yeah. making fun of black people in front of non-black people. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. just yeah. unnecessary. Pretty, yeah, it's just like there are certain people that Jesus Christ, do I not really like Candace Owens? But she's we ours. We shouldn't air, air out as much as we probably do it now. She she is ours. I'm something she but, says I agree with. Are they? But so other things. I don't things, really have anything else. Uh, oh, I have. One, what happened to NRA? What's going on with the NRA? Oh, they put, they threw so much so much money into this last election to the point where they actually went into bankruptcy. And then, along with that and having a bunch of active lawsuits and tied up inside of stuff like that. All I can say is I can't wait until next week. Cause oh. that sh- <laughs> I mean, I'm going to text Tony first. <laughs> I'm not you know, paying no attention. I'm I don't care. Tony gonna be sitting down here with his assault rifles. Like anybody coming over no, here? No, I just want to laugh. Ain't like, it's not... here. That's why we don't live in the capital city. I'm gonna be watching anime, paying absolutely no attention. Oh, we got stuff that comes on during the week again. That's exactly, because I have, like I said, I. Have... I mean, I just need content for next week. <laughs> oh. but, uh, That's all. This has been uh, the Conscious Reconstruction Podcast. But I don't think we had anything else. Mine is Ash. I'm the host with the most, a.k.a. Tony Melbourne. That's the most host, a.k.a. Just Charles 009. On there's everything. On everything. I'm Sleepy Melbourne on everything. Everything. And there's Trina. Thank you, you guys. All right, we out of here. Oh.